All right, Mary Lance is next. She is a journalist and a ceramic artist, which, you know, they go together. It's just a natural thing. After careers as a teacher, a director of a war on poverty program, and a community planner, Mary Lance thought she was solving her writing itch with a publication of Lynn Ford, Texas Artist and Craftsman by, by the way, Trinity Press back in 1978. But she says the itch got worse, so she wrote and then received a National Endowment for the Arts grant, launched into freelance writing career, then as a feature writer and reporter. You may remember the byline for the now closed San Antonio Light. She continued freelancing, including for the San Antonio Express News, also served as public information director of the United Way, as well as other nonprofits. She wrote and produced documentaries for KLRN TV, most notable Harding Black and American Treasure. But throughout, is there whistling? But throughout her career, Lance also worked in ceramics, and now as a continuing ed student at Palo Alto College, she still lives on the banks of the San Antonio River right across the street from Lynn Ford's former home and shop. She is married to an architect, Mike Lance, grown daughters, Catherine and Sarah, sons-in-law, Lance and Wes. Grant, this is sounding like an obit, but she's going to speak here. <laughs> Lance and Wes, she is survived by. Grandchildren, Hillary. Addison, Grace, Charlie, and Henry, please give it up for Mary Lance! I have to change my intro because it's already been said. I'll figure it out. <laughs> my talk tonight is about artist and craftsman Lynn Ford who died on January 1st 1978 at age 70 he died about nine months before this book was published um, I, I wanted to say about how Lynn and Neil the architect were intertwined but that's Neil's already been talked about so I'll skip that um, <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> in the, I don't, it's really not known, but in the 1930s, Lynn had a shop in Dallas and he supported Neil. And then when Neil became a renowned architect, um, he commissioned many, many of Lynn's works. Uh, tonight, I'm so happy. You can't you look for, where are you, Jonas? Right here. Jonas Perkins was one of the workers in Lynn's shop. He's now really a well-known sculptor. Yeah. And um, architect Jack Peterson is out there. He, he was a number, number of one of the architects who came to work with Lynn. And Linda Ford, are you here, Linda? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Linda Ford is, um, uh, is was, is uh, Lynn's precious niece. Okay, I'm supposed to touch it, right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Lynn Ford never married, but he was never alone. He was always surrounded by friends and workers and an assortment of artists, architects, musicians, students. They came for the camaraderie of the shop. Thank you. But they, they, stayed, uh, but they stayed for him. Here are the brothers. Uh, Neil's on the left, Lynn's on the right. Neil was the architect, Lynn was the builder contractor for this house for oil man Sid Richardson on St. Joseph Island in the early 1940s. They joined forces for a number of other houses for other oil men throughout the 40s. This is my favorite picture of Lynn with Watergate the rooster. He called him the watch rooster because he was a master raconteur one apprentice said, we came for his stories, but we came for him. <laughs> Lynn was encouraged by his father and his mother to make toys, as you see up there, and draw, and later to make furniture. He talked to me a lot about the encouragement that his parents gave uh, gave him as a child, and I think that was seminal in both of the boys. This is the last of three shops uh, that Lynn had, and the shop is in a converted cow barn behind Lynn's house. There's a problem with this picture. I don't know if you can see it. 
see the floor? There's no sawdust. In Lynn's shop, previous shop, this was after he died, there were two or three inches of sawdust. I worked in Lynn's shop in the summer of 67 making these ceramic light fixtures. That's how I got to know him so well. Uh, I'd say, Lynn, I don't like this design. He'd say, well, just draw lines like this. And he was always right. He was my kind of really nourishing teacher. Denise Kasurik, an apprentice, became a daughter like, uh, like a daughter to Lynn, told me it was that Lynn was so sure about what he was doing that he didn't have any forced movements. He was so familiar with tools and wood, so at ease, that he would pick up a chisel and place it and hit it in all one motion. Worker and architect Bob Hours explained, most of the time Lynn would draw directly on an object before carving, or might make quick sketches, often on a scrap of paper that had football scores or racing scores. He loved horse racing. Uh, he worked anytime, anywhere, on the kitchen table, in front of the fireplace. Here's Lynn making a lead, lead panel in his characteristic well-worn corduroy coat. Mosaic artist and friend Tom Stell said, Lynn is incapable of making anything ugly. You could hold a court, Colt 45 to his head and he couldn't. He just turns out beautiful things like a cow gives milk, see? <laughs> so these next four slides are all of details of his work that show his really simple yet very sophisticated designs. Ours said, most of Lynn's work is all about using three basic geometric forms, the circle, the triangle, and the square. He was a brilliant designer, a very brilliant composer of forms, which were crisply and craftily rendered. Uh, Ours told me that um, Lynn doesn't feel a need for a theme. He's much more fascinated with the manipulation of materials, designing with a view toward the way light falls across the surfaces rather than try to put a message of great import. I just love these, they're so tactical. Lynn told me, I draw on the paper with a grease pencil, pitch one to Rodolfo, the other to Bob, they roughed it out, and I finished it. Indeed, Lynn was that quick and that basic. This is a pause for you to look at the detail. seconds be so long. <laughs> Lynn made these four foot diameter ceramic plaques of the Six Flags of Texas for the Vita Assembly Building. I'm sure you've seen them. He wasn't experienced in wet clay or glazes, but these results are stunning. He was never afraid to take on a job whether he knew how to work it or not. It didn't matter. He was so skilled at whatever craft he had. Now here's the Trinity Chapel. More of Lynn's works are in the chapel than any place else on the campus. Uh, Screens and doors and chandeliers, all were made in his own air conditioned shop at Willoway on the south side, surrounded by his workers and many followers, including me. Few pieces of Lynn's work show this, how this unorthodox craftsman does, as this <clears throat> light fixture on the right. Right. Instead of carving the clay while wet, he took it out of the mold, would let it sit, gather sawdust, and then carve it as if it were wood. This cross was uh, made by Lynn and his workers and donated by Neil in, um, in honor of their mother. But if you look closely, you can see little gold glints in between those wood. They were gold ceramic squares, a very simple detail. He made hundreds of them, and then when they were laying out, we called them gold turds. <laughs> this, this, um, Lead panel fireplaces in Trinity's Chapman Graduate Center. For the, de for the panel on the right, Lynn would um, take a block of wood and carve in reverse, and then he would lay a sheet of plumber's lead over it and pound out the design with a rubber mallet. Now here's Lynn in front of the Willoway shop in an uncharacteristic pose. He usually, he ran from fame. He didn't want to do awards. He said they just cost time and money. He showed up for one award in a $2.50 suit that he bought at a thrift store. The client, Mrs. Pat Haggerty, knowing Lynn wasn't interested in credit, insisted that he sign this door. And then in closing, a month before he died, Lynn's sister said Lynn told her he would never mind dying. 
only that he wanted to leave a clear path of his work for others to follow, learn from, and enjoy. Lynn, indeed, left a body of sophisticated yet unaffected artistry. His disarmingly simple works were his legacy. Would you all go ahead and use that one over there, or this one over here? This way we can both be lounge singers. I don't think I want to do this. It, sure? it won't, it'll be painless. I don't know. <laughs> do you have anything to hide? <laughs> well, Are your grandkids here, by the way? The ones that uh, you're going to club no. behind? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Just uh, my daughter, Catherine. Okay, we'll give it up for Catherine. Okay. Now, by the way, um, so, how did you wind up after a career as a teacher and a director of a war on poverty program, which, by the way, was? New Careers Program. New Careers Program. New Careers Program. And then, how did you wind up here working with Lynn Ford? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. My husband, I don't have to worry about 20 seconds. My husband, Mike Lance, was the architect of this building. And the Trinity Tower. And he oh. was with me. And uh, so I was around and met Lynn because Lynn and Neil were always in and out. And I like to do play. So somebody decided that I should do these ceramic light fixtures. And yeah. so do you still do this kind of? Do you do yes. ceramic stuff? Yes, I do. At Power Alto College. Did you know if you're 65 and older, you can take courses for free? And I did not know that. Should I have said that? No, you should. I actually, I met someone on the Palo Alto campus Who? in a walker. I don't, I have the name written down. She was, she has been working on her degree for X number of years. And then, anyway, okay. So, uh, where can we find more about, besides your book, uh, on Lynn Ford? Where, where are his works, mainly, besides oh, the Trinity oh Chimney? Um, it's the quiz. Just 20 seconds. One moment, please. Okay, I'm sorry. One moment, please. So this is the book, by the way, and oh, it's still out there. Oh, my God. Um, they're all over town, uh, but they're in people's homes. Uh, the the Mark, Patsy and Marshall Steves, by the way, that sponsored the book. Tons of stuff there, and some of the doors were Jane Steves and her husband. Okay. Quit, somebody. Jack and Carolyn, help me. The Where? The oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we, yes, the governor's uh, corridor. Okay, and now why is the rooster named Watergate? <laughs> it was the Watergate time, and that's all I remember. <laughs> I believe that's what they said a lot during Watergate. Uh, <laughs> At this particular time, of him. and uh, two other things, I want to shout out to Jonas Perkins. I did a story on him. He's responsible for the uh, Korean War Memorial, right? Aren't you there, George Jonas? You still up up near Fredericksburg? <laughs> Thank you. I knew you when you were young too. Uh, and I just want to know, maybe you know why Linda Ford sounded so disgusted when she said, "Linda, are you here?" Oh, I think she's very shy, even though she's a theater major. <laughs> let's, let's just try it together one more time. Linda? Are you here, Linda? Yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much.